This is Newsbreak 26 in Southwest New Brunswick. I'm Vicki Hogarth. Here's what's happening in our part of the world. The Algonquin Resort and Golf Course in St. Andrews by the Sea has a new owner. The historic property, originally built in 1889, was acquired this week by Invest, Canada's largest independent hotel owner, with over 85 hotels in its portfolio across the country. CHCO spoke with Invest head office in Toronto, who said they plan on renovating the resort to upgrade its rooms, common areas and amenities. Other Invest properties in Canada include the former Trump Tower in Toronto, now operating as the St. Regis Hotel, as well as six hotels in New Brunswick, which include a number of comfort inns, as well as the Hilton in St. John and the Delta Beau Sejour in Moncton. Invest also has a 20% stake in the famous Fairmount Royal York Hotel in Toronto, which, like the Algonquin, is a former Canadian Pacific Railway hotel. Invest operates under the umbrella of its mother company, Blue Sky, which describes itself as a Canadian-based company backed by Hong Kong Capital. After two high-profile resignations from Dorothy Shepard and Trevor Holder, Premier Blaine Higgs shuffled his cabinet on Tuesday. And a new addition to the Executive Council is St. Croix MLA Kathy Baucus, who has been given a new portfolio as the minister responsible for seniors. Higgs notably removed local government minister Daniel Allain and transportation and infrastructure minister Jeff Carr from cabinet just over a week after they voted against him on controversial changes to New Brunswick school gender identity policy, policy 713. After nearly a year of fundraising, critical restoration work at Swallowtail Lighthouse on Grand Manan is now underway, thanks to generous donations that keep coming in to meet the $479,000 cost of restoring the exterior of both the lighthouse and keeper's house. A recent fundraiser for Swallowtail called Tending the Light on CHCO Television that raised $55,000 for Swallowtail caught the attention of the Beaverbrook Canadian Foundation, who donated another $15,000 towards the lighthouse reparations this week. You did a very good job in promoting the repairs that were urgently needed to preserve the lighthouse, and I thought that this was something that we might want to assist with and each of the directors have a little fund that we're allowed to recommend use of uh, each year and so when we had our annual meeting uh, about three weeks ago um, I promoted the Swallowtail and the other directors agreed. Giving to Swallowtail was a natural fit for the Beaverbrook Canadian Foundation which holds New Brunswick based projects in high esteem. Lord Beaverbrook, although he was born in Northern Ontario, moved to New Brunswick when he was about six months old. His father was a Presbyterian minister, and the, he lived his childhood in what's now Miramichi, I think it was called Newcastle then. And so New Brunswick was always really important to him. Finally, graduation services took place last week for high schools across New Brunswick, and CHCO was thrilled to be invited to cover Sir James Dunn Academy's graduation ceremony live from the iconic Kira Amphitheater in St. Andrews on Thursday. We were equally as thrilled to travel to Campobello Island on Saturday to cover the graduation ceremony for Campobello Island Consolidated School, which had a total of four graduates. Yes, CICS might have one of the smallest graduating classes in the province, but you wouldn't know that from the turnout to the grad ceremony, which was truly a community event. Congratulations to all the grads in New Brunswick from all of us here at CHCO TV. That's all the news I have for you. For more stories and online exclusives, follow us on Facebook at chco.tv. The news and public affairs production of CHCO TV. New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.